In this video, we are going to set up role-based protection using member groups. Let's take a quick recap at what we've done so far. We've created members, member type called associate, and member groups. We have already assigned one of our member to a premium member group and another member to an executive member group. To set up role-based protection based on member groups, we need to create two document types with templates called register or login page and an error page. We'll need to create the necessary macros and partial view files. Include the macros and partial views in our content node and templates. And finally, restrict access to a content node. So before we get started, I'll show you the two document types I've already created. In the settings section, under the document types folder, there are two document types called error page and register. The error page consists of the page title property with text string as its editor, an error property with image media picker as its editor, and hide from navigation property with true false as its editor. Something to note that the hide from navigation property is not a default in Umraco. So you will have to set this up yourself. And the register or login page consists of the page title property with text string editor and content property with rich text editor. The home contains the register and error page as its child nodes. Moving on to the templates, I've nested both the error page and the register page under the master template. In the error page template, I've rendered the image and in the register page, I've only set up the template. Nothing is being rendered here. Moving on to the content section, under the home node, I've added both the register or login page and the error page and filled in the basic details. Now, let's take a look at how the front end looks. So, we'll go to the home node. In the info tab, click on the published link. I've used the starter kit site for the tutorial. At the end of the navigation bar, we have the register page. Currently, we do not have any content, so nothing is being rendered here. Also, the error page is not shown in the navigation menu cause we have enabled the hide from navigation property. With our document types in place, let's move on to creating the necessary macros and partial view files. Let's go to the settings section and under the templating section, expand the partial view macro files folder. We'll right click the folder and select create and select new partial view macro from snippet. We'll first select the register member snippet. And now let's enter a name for the partial view. I'll call it register. Let's save it. Similarly, let's add another partial view macro from snippet. And this time we'll select login. And I'll name the partial view macro login and save it. Now let's navigate to the partial views folder and create a new partial view from snippet. Let's select the login status snippet and name it login status. This partial view will show the current status, whether the person is logged in or not. These three partial views already contain all the necessary code to make the register login and logout functionality work. Since the register and login were created as macro partials, you will have the corresponding macros with the same names available under the macros folder. In the editor settings, we'll enable the login and register macros to be used in rich text editor and the grid. And save these macros. Now that we have the macros and partial views, let's include them in the content node and templates. Let's navigate to the content section. In the register node, we'll go to the content property and insert the macro. Depending on how you would like to structure your register or login page, you can include one of the macros or place both of them next to each other. I'll select both of them for now. 
Let's surrender these macros in the template. We'll go to the settings section. In the templates folder, we'll go to the register template. And in the blank space, I'll click insert and select macro and the name of the macro. In this case, login. Similarly, I'll render the register macro as well. Cool. Let's save the template now. We have one more thing left to do, and that is to render the partial view. To do so, let's go to the partial views folder, expand the navigation folder, and select the top navigation component. Here, I'm going to type at the rate html.partial and enter the name of your partial view in the quotes. Since this partial view is added in the navigation page, we'll be able to see the login status no matter on which page we currently are in. Cool, we've done quite some changes now. So let's take a look at the front end. We'll refresh the front end and the register or login functionality is now rendered on the front end. Using this page, we can register new members. Let's quickly register a new member. I'll enter the name, an email, give it a password, and confirm the password. Once I click on register, we get a message saying registration succeeded. Also, you can see the member name on the top here. Every registered person will show up in the member section in the back office. Now that we have the options to register a member, log in a member, check current login status and log out a member, we'll go a bit further and specify which pages of our website should be accessible to logged in members. Let's go to the content section and restrict the blog page. We'll right click on blog and select restrict public access. Here, you can restrict access to a specific member or a specific group. We'll choose group based protection and click on next. We are now presented with more options. So first we need to select the groups who have access to the page block. So I'll click on add and select executive member group. Next, we need to select the pages that contain the login form and error messages. So for the login page, I'll click on add and select the register or login page. And for the error page, let's click on add and select the error page. This error page will be displayed if the selected content is inaccessible to the chosen group. Let's save these changes. You'll now notice in the content menu a small red icon on top of the document type icon signifying the content node is restricted. Now that we have the role piece protection in place, let's walk through the outcome that will be displayed to our front end users. We can see our login page in the navigation bar. But before we log in as an existing member, I'll try to click on our restricted page. As you can see, it directs us to the login page immediately. Now, I'll sign in as a member of the premium member group. When I click on login, it says restricted access. That's because the premium member group does not have access to the restricted page. Now, let's log out and finally log in as a member from the executive group. And when we try accessing the blog page, it shows us the contents of the page. We've covered a lot in this video, so let's quickly review it. We learned there are four main steps to setting up role-based protection. The first step is to create new member groups, which we covered in the previous video. The second step is to create new login and error pages. The third step is to create the necessary macros and partial files. And the fourth step is to use the restrict public access option from the options list. If you're still unsure about any of the steps, you can check out the documentation. I'll leave the link in the description box below.
If you wish to learn the best practices and take advantage of the latest Umraco features, you can sign up to the Umraco Fundamentals training course. I'll leave this link as well in the description box below. And that's it for today's video. Stay tuned for more videos. Until then, take care and stay safe.